Now that Kevin McCarthy has given away the keys to the car to far-right rebels in the Republican caucus in order to win himself the speakership, I need you all to remember Benghazi. Exactly eight months after the deadly attack in Benghazi that killed Ambassador Chris Stevens and three others, leaked emails reveal the Obama administration was more involved than initially stated in watering down the now widely discredited talking points. It makes it look like they're trying to hide something, whether or not they are. A thorny issue for the Obama administration, and analysts say perhaps a larger problem for former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, said to be eyeing a possible presidential bid in 2016. Calling it an attack is like saying the sky's blue. Of course it was an attack. Well, you know, I mean, it we want to know the truth. This, the statement you sent out was a statement on Benghazi, and you say vicious behavior as a response to inflammatory material on the Internet. If that's not pointing as the motive of being a video, I don't know what is. And that's certainly, what, and that's certainly how the American people saw it. Well, well, Congressman, there was a lot of conflicting information that we were trying to make sense of. The situation was very fluid. It was fast moving. You know who else moved fast? Congressional Republicans like Jim Jordan, who you just saw. More on him in a moment. Remember that name. There were 10 total investigations into the 2012 attacks on a U.S. diplomatic outpost in Libya across four years. Eight were conducted by Congress. Six were Republican-led, including the House Select Committee on Benghazi, chaired by Trey Gowdy. That probe alone included 33 hearings, 11 hours of testimony from Clinton herself. And while the Select Committee's investigation cost taxpayers is a mere $7 million, the total cost across all these probes tally north of $40 million. But her emails, but her emails, that's actually where that line of attack originated. Let's look back at that select committee's final report. Jim Jordan and then Congressman Mike Pompeo issued an additional addendum to the 800-page report because apparently they thought their own report from their own Republican-led committee didn't go far enough. Jordan and Pompeo offered more scathing criticism of Hillary Clinton over her emails about Benghazi from a private email account and server, calling it unprecedented and adding that the Obama administration had withheld information. Never mind that Clinton did hand over emails relevant to the Benghazi attack, according to the top Democrat on that panel, Elijah Cummings. Emails which are cited throughout the report. No other Republican on the committee, not one, signed on to those additional views from Pompeo and Jordan. So why am I telling you all of this? Why am I reminding you of the time wasted and the millions of taxpayer dollars spent? Also, Republicans could conclude they'd found absolutely nothing new against Secretary Clinton. No more evidence of wrongdoing against her in the Benghazi attacks. Why? Because over the weekend, Finally, a new House was sworn in, putting Republicans back in charge and giving them the ability to begin new investigations, new congressional investigations into the lead up to the next presidential election. Think of them as Benghazi 2.0 or Benghazi on steroids. We will be prepared to hold the Biden administration accountable from day one. Future speaker just barely, Kevin McCarthy, tweeted in November. Our investigations are just getting started, he wrote. Republicans will be trying to dig into Dr. Anthony Fauci's decades of dedicated public service. They'll be looking at the growing number of migrants entering through the southern border. They'll be trying to hack into, metaphorically speaking, Hunter Biden's laptop. But his laptop. His laptop. Because, hey, if Republicans were trying to torpedo Hillary Clinton's chances to be president during the lead-up to the 2016 election with a politically motivated Benghazi investigation, guess what? It kind of worked. And so launching a well-timed probe into Hunter Biden's laptop and his finances as we approach 2024 is a logical strategy for Republicans to try as they try and deny President Biden a second term in the White House. All of which means we'll be seeing a lot of this guy in the years ahead. Jim Jordan turning up again and again like a bad penny. He's likely to chair the powerful House Judiciary Committee so help us all. Not only that, according to the terms of the deal that McCarthy struck with his power-hungry rebels to finally be elected speaker on his 15th attempt, such a desperate move on his part, by the way, Tracy Flick would be proud, there will be a new judiciary subcommittee now, empowered to go after the DHS, the DOJ, the FBI, and more. And it's called, wait for it, the Select Subcommittee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government. Now there's a title for you, full of projection. And guess who's expected to chair that committee too? Yep, 
Congressman Jim Jordan, according to NBC sources. That means pursuing ongoing criminal investigations of things like the Mar-a-Lago confidential documents probe or, or the Justice Department's investigations of Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Not just investigate them, but perhaps try and hold up both of those probes. Former Republican Congressman David Jolly pointing out that establishing the subcommittee is almost like legitimizing the insurrection. The committee also gave itself carte blanche to access any information it wants, including anything shared with the House Intelligence Committee, which is often highly classified and limited to just those Intel Committee members. But wait, there's more. This panel can also pursue, quote, any other issues related to the violation of the civil liberties of citizens of the United States and any other matter relating to information collected pursuant to the investigation conducted under this paragraph at any time during the 118th Congress. Remember the days when we thought the Patriot Act was invasive? So let's not pretend this has anything to do with anything other than party politics. How do I know that? Just listen to the guy who's now in possession of the gavel back during Benghazi. Everybody thought Hillary Clinton was unbeatable, right? But we put together a Benghazi special committee, a select committee. What are her numbers today? Her numbers are dropping. From the horse's mouth. Look, this is not government of the people, by the people, or for the people. This is cynical, partisan, attention-seeking, undermining of democratic government by power-hungry authoritarians. It's McCarthyism all over again, only this time it's Kevin, not Joe. Joining me now is Kurt Bardella, advisor to the DNC and DCCC, and a former Republican spokesperson for the House Oversight Committee. He was a senior advisor at that committee when it first began. Congressional investigations into Clinton and Benghazi. Kurt, thanks for coming back on the show. We have Jim Jordan likely to chair one of the House's most powerful committees and likely to chair this new subcommittee on the weaponization of government. Talk about irony. How bad are things going to get when it comes to blatantly partisan investigations by this new GOP House majority? Well, I think you put it best, Betty, when you call it Benghazi on steroids. I kind of call it Benghazi without any of the adults in the room at all. Remember, when the Benghazi investigation first began, the leadership of the Republican House were, was people like John Boehner, Eric Kanner, Paul Ryan. And they, in fact, started this committee initially because they wanted to try to rein in some of the crazy. There were so many investigations going on by House Republicans that there was so much infighting about who would get the headlines and who would get attention and who would get on media that they tried to consolidate that to control the crazy. Well, here we are almost a decade later, and there's no safeguards. There's no one trying to control the crazy. The crazy has taken over the entire party. Yes. The crazy has all the gavels. The crazy has all the power. So what we saw back in 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15, it's, that's nothing compared to what we're about to witness. Yes, very well put in terms of the crazy taking over. You were there in those committee, meeting, committee meetings, excuse me, behind the scenes with Republican members during Benghazi. Give us a picture of what Republicans were saying then to each other behind the scenes and what they're saying now as they get ready to launch these investigations. What's their plan? What's their focus? What are they really trying to achieve? And privately, Kurt, they admit to each other, I am guessing, how cynical and political this all is. Well, it's funny because now the things that were said privately, quietly, behind closed doors, hey, if this works, this could take down Hillary Clinton's campaign. If we do our job right, she's going to be walking wounded into the nomination. They're basically saying all these things out loud now. They're not even trying to mask it or hide it. They're not even trying to pretend like they're going to do actual legitimate oversight or at least have the veneer of legitimate oversight. They're just outright pounding their chest saying we're going to go after uh, political enemies. We're going to investigate our political adversaries. We're going to use the instruments of power. Never mind the fact, by the way, that they spent the last, what, two years ignoring the instruments of power, trying to delegitimize congressional oversight, trying to ignore congressional subpoenas. But they're going to use those powers, those tools now to go after the Biden presidency and they're not even trying to be subtly quiet about it. They're just outright announcing it and declaring it. You told Rolling Stone magazine that the GOP strategy under the Obama administration and during the Benghazi probes was, quote, flood the zone and take advantage of the media's competition with one another to break things, break stories. Do you think Speaker McCarthy and this House GOP will adopt the same strategy? And how should the media respond? 
You know, they will. And, and part of this, and this was a big part of what I think made the Republican messaging we've seen so successful during the Obama years, was the media was kind of their unwitting accomplice and partner in their effort to legitimize their witch hunts. And they're really going to go back to that same playbook. Now, you notice how almost everybody who covers these things, they call it the Republican oversight agenda. They don't call it taxpayer finance witch hunts. They don't call it fishing expeditions by just calling it oversight. They're legitimizing these efforts. That's what the Republicans are banking on, that every time they issue a subpoena, every time they issue a document request, every time they have a hearing, that it will be treated as if it's, a, it's, it's on equal footing as the investigations that have been conducted, legitimate ones, into Donald Trump's criminality. The Republicans are banking that the media will drop the ball, not provide yeah. the context, and give them that legitimacy. And engage in both sides of them, as you say. Compare the work of the 1 6 committee with some of these nonsensical committees. One last question, Kurt. Let's talk about Speaker McCarthy and his newfound, albeit quite weakened, power. How long will that really last? He gave some pretty major concessions to the far, far, far right of his party who will have undue influence over him in a way that, uh, you know, re rebels didn't under previous speakers. Uh, he, you know, they could oust him pretty quickly tomorrow if they wanted to. Uh, will he come to regret that? Will he even last a full term? No, he won't. And I'll tell you, the bill is always due with these people. When you make a deal with someone like Donald Trump, when he's making calls for you, when he's out there taking credit for why you got over the finish line, what are you going to do when he calls you and says, OK, Kevin, I want you to endorse me for president of the United States? What are you going to do when some of these whack jobs that are on committees and have gavels say, we're going to impeach Joe Biden, even though they know it's a political loser, even though they know there's zero appetite right now amongst the American electorate for that type of witch hunt investigation and impeachment? They're going to keep pushing the line. And the minute that McCarthy even thinks about not doing what they want, they'll dump him.